Uh, welcome back to the second session of today. Um, we start with the first presenter. Uh, Michele Calvello uh, is Associate Professor in Geotechnical Engineering at University of Salerno, Italy. And his presentation today is about a landslide early warning system. So Michele, the floor is yours. You have 15 minutes. Thank you very much, <coughs> Victoria, for uh, these. Uh, can you see my presentation and nothing, uh, nothing on top, right? Yes. Yeah, we see okay. it. Thank you very much, Dan. OK, so thank you for the invitation also to this uh, very interesting forum. I move um, quickly to my presentation. So I will deal with landslide early warning. Uh, I would like to start with a definition and a framework for early warning system proposed already 15 years ago by uh, the then United Nations International Strategy for Disaster Reduction, now UNDRR. In both the definition and the schematic, uh, the role of dissemination, communication and response capability is highlighted alongside risk knowledge, monitoring and warning. The, you, if you, can, you can see that UNDRR talks about an integrated system, which includes uh, hazard monitoring, forecasting, uh, prediction, disaster risk assessment, communication, preparedness activities, all of that to enable people exposed to risk, um, that is individuals, communities, governments, businesses, to do something to reduce uh, that risk. And that something is to take timely action in advance of the hazardous event. With all of that, without, sorry, all of that, uh, no, an early warning system wouldn't be uh, effective. If we consider risk, uh, the risk management process, uh, as it is defined by uh, the latest ISO guidelines on risk management, uh, risk mitigation by early warning is a risk treatment option that we have in our hands after the risk has been evaluated. I like this schematic uh, because it highlights the role that communication, consultation, monitoring and review have in this process. <clears throat> and it also allows me to highlight that the main actors on the scene are not only the managers of the systems, but also researchers working at the models using the system and people whose behavior influenced by you know, their risk perception is a uh, key uh, to a system that is indeed effective in reducing disaster risks in advance of hazardous events, as we said. If we specifically look at the uh, landslide early warning systems, uh, this is, of course, um, where we are in the landslide risk uh, management schematics proposed by Fell and co authors in 2005. And I'm assuming that given the audience, I don't need to spend more time on, on this. So I move forward, uh, showing to you some of the schemes that have been proposed in the literature to show the main features of landslide early warning system. Uh, system. So we, we, with a spoiler alert that they were both devised at MGI, these two ones. So the, you can see a somewhat old fashioned scheme from 2007 in which uh, four activities are highlighted using a classical uh, technical flowchart. You move from monitoring to analysis and forecasting to warning to response in a sequential way. However, if um, you see here in the right part of the slide, uh, a newer, more recent scheme following somehow the UNDRR approach that we saw at the beginning highlights that also non technical components, such as education, must be considered essential parts of the system, in addition to the more technical components, in this case identified with design, monitoring, and uh, forecasting. What kind of landslides do these systems address? Uh, that is indeed a question that designers and managers need to ask themselves uh, to devise the proper system. Issues like the typology of the, and the material of the landslides, uh, the phase of activity, their expected maximum velocity and volume must be identified. To this aim, uh, here you can see what I think it could be a useful scheme for defining monitoring and modeling strategies for early warning purposes that are adequate to the uh, phenomena addressed. But for the sake of time, I move quickly forward to highlight also the scale issue. When we are considering the predisposing factors, if our landslide early warning system is addressing a specific landslide or a specific slope where first failures may occur, issues like the geostructural setting, the mechanical behavior of the soils and rocks involved, and the groundwater regime must be properly addressed. My reference here goes back to 1950, and Tersagi mentioning them. Whereas for analysis at regional scale, I, I refer to much more recent guidelines from 2008, uh, specifically to the issue of landslide susceptibility analysis and zoning. Of course, the scale issue is also relevant for the triggering factors. 
Yet, uh, as you can see here, we must acknowledge that lens allergy warning systems are indeed at both scales a good risk uh, treatment option, mainly, not only, but you know, mainly for weather induced uh, landslides. And with this in mind, uh, I devised my own proposal of a schematic, uh, it was picked up also by other authors in the literature afterwards, to highlight what is indeed important to consider when um, designing and operating a warning system for weather induced landslides. Uh, you can see that at the core of the system is a model. Uh, I call it the landslide model, where a relationship between the weather features and the landslide event, which may be multiple landslides at regional scale, for instance, is established, considering the geological, geomorphological, hydrogeological, and geotechnical characteristics of the area, and of course, an appropriate uh, monitoring strategy. Then you have a warning model. It does not coincide with the landslide model, as you need to make uh, the model operational by defining what a warning event is, for instance, uh, choosing a number of meaningful warning levels, and by establishing proper warning criteria. And then uh, the warning model is not a warning system, as other components are still needed, such as uh, dissemination procedures, communication strategies, education actions, community involvement, and last but not least, the definition of, of an emergency plan that has clear rules of engagement for the stakeholders involved. Landslide early warning systems are there in the world, many, but not, not too many are properly described in the literature or in other uh, easily accessible material. Anyway, given the time that I have you know, for this talk, I thought of the talk essentially as a way of um, providing to you a list of uh, reference material to read, look at, uh, if you want to know, know more, to deepen your knowledge on this topic. Therefore, here uh, I'm mentioning three recent review papers, review papers by definition uh, full of other relevant references. Uh, one is written by Pecoraro and co-authors, deals uh, with uh, local uh, lens and warning systems. The other two, written by Pichulo and co-authors and Gutsetti and co-authors, address lens and warning systems at regional scale, respectively called territorial and geographical by the two groups of authors. Uh, now, uh, as I already said, I'm going just to highlight the main features addressed in these papers. Uh, the review on local systems uh, is mainly centered around the monitoring strategies adopted by the 29 systems reviewed. Activities, parameters, uh, monitoring methods in relation to the landslide types considered. But it presents also um, in the first part of the paper the characteristics of these systems considering their different uh, components grouped um, coherently with the framework that I just presented to you in a landslide model section, a warning model section, a warning system section, and a final performance evaluation section. In the first review on territorial systems, 24 of them are considered, presented, then discussed, and um, as you can see here, the discussion is centered around the general settings of the system, uh, systems, uh, monitoring network, weather forecast, landslide types, covered area, the models adopted, uh, the warning strategy, including warning levels, warning zones, territorial units, modes of issuing a warning, and the response characteristics. Uh, also, the analysis of the performance of this system has been uh, addressed. Um, initially, a table with the different schemes proposed in the literature is also presented. In the second review, hearing the, the systems are called uh, geographical, there is an interesting initial section on terminology, you know, which in itself, you know, is a sign that some terms are not used coherently in the landslide community. Uh, for instance, the term advisory is here used to define uh, all stages or levels considered by a system and the related messages. The difference is proposed between prediction and forecast. The separation between landslide model, warning model, and warning system is uh, confirmed. Um, I hear some noise. I'm not sure if somebody has a mic on. Uh, Anyway, I go on. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> Besides these terminological issues, uh, there is also you know, the analysis and the discussion of the review that mainly focuses on the adopted data, the forecast models, the operational frameworks, and how landslide forecasts become advisories in a final section on performance evaluation. Right, that said, I, I just want to close this part highlighting for you that uh, there are two recent grey literature uh, contributions by an NGO that is engaged in many landslide warning projects worldwide, particularly in developing countries, uh, practical action. And these uh, two very short introductory guides, uh, they are overviews for non-experts, I think are interesting. They are on local and regional rainfall trigger landslide early warning systems. And now, 
example, uh, very briefly, some examples of operational lens at the rewarding systems. I choose uh, three local ones, three territorial ones, essentially to highlight in a very rapid overview, uh, different features, purposes, and characteristics. Uh, let's start with the system addressing the well-known Oakland lens slide in Norway. We are in Norway, well-known because here the risk scenario is not the moving soil mass itself, but the cascading event. Now the tsunami that may occur if the current reactive rock slide that is slow moving at the moment uh, with recorded velocities of the order of centimeters per year suddenly falls into the fjord. As a side note, I can add that uh, the, there was a movie called The Wave, there is a movie called The Wave that was inspired by this scenario, in it also by, by something that historically really happened in Norway with catastrophic consequences. Uh, the system at Ilgraben in Switzerland addresses totally different phenomena, debris flows. The system is interesting uh, to look at uh, because this catchment is very actively releasing material every year, so there are typically multiple events and thus the system that the managers at the WSL have been implementing over the years is tested recurrently. If you speak French or German, <clears throat> you may want to watch the short video. I linked it at the right bottom of the slide with an interview to one of the people in charge of the system, Francois Dufour. In China, uh, we got a presentation that uh, before was dealing with the Three Gorges Dam. In this particular area, there is a very long reservoir, early fluctuations, as we already saw, of the order of 30 plus meters. Therefore, it's easy now to understand that many stretches of the old river are indeed homes to many active landslides, as we saw, and that cause, uh, causes clearly problems to many urban areas, which are indeed newly constructed, relocated towns, as the one you can see here, top right picture. Therefore, it's the presence of many monitoring and warning initiatives. Moving on to territorial systems, Hong Kong is hosting uh, the oldest uh, system in the world, as you can see from the title of the article that I'm mentioning here, you know, recounting 40 years of progress of this system. But I'm not going to say anything more on this uh, as next speaker, you know, the head of the geotechnical engineering office from Hong Kong, in, uh, will devote his entire talk to uh, how they manage landslide risk uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, another municipal system in operation in the city of Rio de Janeiro is operational um, uh, in the city of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Uh, since 1996, monitoring is essentially based on rain gauges. There are many, more than 30 across the city, yet the warnings are issued with reference to four warning zones, as you can see here. We have four warning levels, advisories essentially of probability of landslides, represented with the colors green, yellow, red and black. And if we have a black or a red situation in any of the four warning zones, an alert simulation procedure is followed, which essentially involves uh, the media broadcasting the news. Uh, a recent, recently, an app was developed, but that's. We started this series with uh, with an example in Norway. We ended with the national landslide early warning system operation in the country since 2013. The main features of the system are condensed in this uh, figure, top left. Uh, not only observations, but also landslide susceptibility and inventory maps, weather forecasts, forecasts models, hydrological models are used. All of them to define um, the one of the other levels. They are four, like in the previous system. Here, the colors used are green, yellow, orange, red. Most typically, that's what's done in many parts of the world. All right, I think I can quickly go to my final part. Closing this presentation, I just want to introduce a, a relatively new community, LandAware, the International Network on Landslide Early Warning Systems. I call it a community because it is indeed a network of individuals uh, who share an interest in cooperating for addressing and promoting issues related to landslide early warning systems. So the, the network is uh, was uh, no, born just a little more than one year ago. Uh, so far, the, the main network-wide uh, events were a kickoff meeting, which was indeed held just one year ago exactly, on 14th of December 2020, on Zoom, of course, because of the pandemic, it was online. But most importantly, we had in May of this year uh, a conference. Uh, we called it Landover May Day. We did it because in, indeed it was a round-the-clock conference, you know, 24 hours with 24 different thematic sessions, uh, mostly organized by the different working groups of the uh, network, addressing different topics. 
then uh, so everybody had a possibility to participate because of you know, the 24 hour format. Uh, if you're interested, you can find not only more detailed information on the event, but also on the YouTube the channel, you can find and you can watch if you want on demand most of the sessions uh, that we had. Therefore, just to close, uh, there are currently a few active Lensware uh, working groups. Mm, if you're interested in getting news, uh, you know, you can go subscribe to the newsletter, even join the community if you are really, really interested. I think my time is over. Concluding remarks. Uh, lens already warning systems are really multidisciplinary. It, it is an interdisciplinary endeavor. Uh, at the center of everything, I put here engineering, uh, geotechnics in particular, engineering, geology, earth sciences, but also, as Thomas, for instance, at the beginning of this uh, forum was saying sociology, psychology, law, a lot of other uh, disciplines, statistics, physics, and so forth. Uh, a, a quote, whether traditional or technology based in 1997, Maskri was saying, early warning systems are only as good as their weakest link. This is quite pe pe pessimistic, but it is, it is true. And he says that they can and frequently do fail for a number of reasons. On a more optimistic side, recently, Cosetti and Quotas, I already mentioned this paper, uh, they say that operational forecasts <coughs> of weather induced landslides are indeed feasible and it can help reduce landslide risk. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that. If you want you know, to listen to me for a longer time, there are some references here, but you know, I thank you very much for your attention. Thanks. Thank you very much, Michele, for this nice overview of local and territorial early warning systems. Uh, let's quickly move on.